Good morning. It is Thursday. Welcome to Compass Daily. So glad you're joining us today. I hope you have your Bible. I hope you have your coffee ready. It's going to be an incredible day. If you need coffee and if you need Jesus, type the word amen in the chat room. Let us know that's all you need, coffee and Jesus. We're glad that you're here today. We are one church in thousands of locations. And my name is Chris Gabbard, the online campus pastor. Our mission at Compass is navigating people to God. And you can help us do that by clicking on the share button right now. But right now, welcome to Compass Daily. We're glad you're here. What's up, Compass Church? Johnny Dias coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee with my quarantine hair. <laughs> you like that? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I hope that through the craziness that is 2020 so far, you are finding ways to just lift up the Lord's name, remember his goodness. I would love to sing a couple worship songs with you guys, if that's all right. So this first one's called Follow You Anywhere. You make it easy to love you You are good and you are kind You bring joy into my life You make it easy to trust you You have never left my side You've been faithful all I want is you, Jesus. All I want is you. You are the refuge I run to. You are the fire that leads me through the night. I'll follow you anywhere. Jesus, Jesus, you 
silence feet Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Breathe and call these bones to live all these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus. That's our prayer. We know your name will not be overcome, not by any virus or economic situation. You are good through it all. Just remind us of your goodness, God. Remind us that you overcome all these things. Remind us, show us what you have for us through this crazy, crazy time. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning. And welcome to the Compass Daily. My name is Rich Green. I'm the Colleyville Campus Pastor. So excited to be with you this morning. I want to start by thanking my good friend Johnny Dias, straight from Nashville, Tennessee. He's a contemporary Christian recording artist, singer, songwriter, and I just appreciate him taking time uh, to lead us in some worship this morning. And I want you to know that following my message, he's going to come back and do one of his original songs for us. And I know you're going to be blessed by that. I know you're going to enjoy that. Today is... May 7th, 2020. Today is the National Day of Prayer, and I think we could all agree that if our country ever needed prayer, it's right now. It's in this season of COVID-19 and the uncertainty of all the things that are going on around us. Well, let me tell you this. You see, nothing ever comes as a surprise to our Heavenly Father. God is sovereign. He knows all things. Fluctuating economies, uh, threats from abroad, unrest at home, pandemics like COVID-19 and other troubling circumstances uh, don't surprise him. He's not unaware of those things. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurs to God? Through prayer, we're able to tap into his wisdom and his strength and his protection and his provision and his peace. He stands ready to respond to us individually and collectively as a country when we humble ourselves and present our needs to him 
and ask for his divine intervention. We pray as Americans, as we sit under a pledge of allegiance that states we are one nation under God. We pray for our nation, a country that uses a currency that says in God we trust. We're encouraged today on the National Day of Prayer as Americans to encounter the God who rules our country. Amos 4.13 says this, He who forms the mountains creates the wind and reveals his thoughts to man. He who turns dawn to darkness and treads the high places of the earth, the Lord God Almighty is his name. So we want to connect with God. We want to take a special time today and pray for our country. So how do we do that? I want to ask you to pray today throughout the day by praying for the seven centers of influence in our nation. Let me break this down for you. And before I do that, let me give you a challenge, a challenge to starting this very next hour at the top of the hour, pray once an hour for our country. And let me give you some prayer points, uh, some directives as you pray throughout the day. You might want to jot these down or put them in your uh, notes on your phone, whatever it might be to try and remember these things. But this first hour, in just a few minutes, I want you to stop and I want you to pray for our government, federal, state, local government. Pray for our leaders. Uh, they have a lot of tough decisions they're making right now. Pray for their wisdom. Pray for their discernment. Pray for integrity. I want to encourage you in hour number two to pray for our military. I have a son that's a major in the Marine Corps. I have a son-in-law that's a, a lieutenant in the Navy. And I ask you to pray for them and pray for all of our men and women that are serving our country. Pray for courage. Pray for perseverance, pray for protection, pray for their families and pray for our military leaders. And along that, thinking about frontline people, pray for those in the hospitals and, and, and the, our civil servants, our police officers, our firemen, uh, all those who are taking care of us through this season of life that we're going through right now. Pray for all of them uh, as you pray for our military. Pray for everyone who is standing guard for us on the front line in a lot of different ways and a lot of different environments. In hour number three, and I know this may be a little hard to swallow, but I want to encourage you not to bail on this one. In hour number three, I ask you to pray for our media. Pray for their integrity. Pray for honesty. Pray that Christians that are in the media would be lifted up in the sight of God and would use their testimony as a witness and to stand for him. Number four, hour number four, pray for the businesses that have been so sorely impacted uh, by this pandemic. Listen, I've had a chance to talk to a number of our church members, a number of dear friends of mine that are being hit very hard by this pandemic and it's really impacting their businesses. I had one dear friend tell me that, listen, we've been open, we've had some things happen, but it certainly hasn't covered expenses. So they're in some dire straits. So pray for the businesses that have been rocked by COVID-19. We pray for peace on their journey. We pray for hope on the horizon. We pray for perseverance through these tough times. And yes, we pray for a quick recovery so these business people can be sustained and continue their livelihood. As they serve us through this entire season, we can serve them by praying for them. And quite frankly, by going and, and visiting them and buying from them and helping them uh, through this really, really tough time that they're going through. Hour number five, I wanna encourage you to pray for educators. Pray for our educators, pray for our teachers, pray for administrators. How special and precious have our teachers become to us in this time, in this season? Listen, they're going through a, a, a lot of things as well. And I want to ask you to do me a favor right now in the chat box on whatever platform you're watching. I want you to drop a name of a teacher right into the chat boxes right now. I want to flood the chat boxes with names of teachers that we can pray for. Teachers that have made an impact on you or your family. Would you help me and, and do that right now? And for those of you who are brand new homeschool teachers, uh, something you never thought would happen, I want to talk to the professional educators, professional teachers, professional administrators. I implore you, I beg you, pray for these parents. I know they would greatly appreciate your prayer support right now as they're trying to hold down the fort and they're trying to figure out and navigate this new life that they're in as well. If I've talked to one, I've talked to 100 parents that very lovingly have said, I'm done. I'm done with this homeschool stuff. 
so uh, let's pray for each other, uh, for the educators, the teachers, the administrators, the homeschool parents, uh, all of education. Let's make sure that we are really, really intentionally praying for them in hour number five. And, and listen, I think here's a realization maybe many of us have come to, that maybe our children aren't quite as special as we thought they were. I'm sure yours are. I'm talking about the other parents out there that are watching this right now. In hour number six, I encourage you to pray for the church. Pray for Compass. Pray for the church as a whole. Pray for her protection. Pray that we'll stay connected. Uh, pray that we'll continue to have a presence online. Pray that we'll continue to be the light in the darkness and the hands and feet of Jesus Christ as we continue to wander through this pandemic season. And in hour number seven, I ask you to pray for the family. Pray for your family. Pray for your neighbor's families. Pray, pray for families in general. Pray for peace on the home front through these stressful times. Pray that families will grow even stronger. Uh, pray that, that, they'll, that they'll connect even more intimately during these, these times, these tough times that, that we're all going through. So throughout the day, I want to encourage you uh, to pray for our country. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to drop the word amen into the chat boxes right now if you'll commit to pray for our country. If you'll commit... Uh, to stand in the gap for our country uh, and pray today, you and a family, I want you to drop the word amen into the chat box. And I thank you in advance for doing that. Well, I wanted to honor the National Day of Prayer. It's a special day in our country and in this COVID quarantine environment, it's a little hard to get together, but we can pray. One thing we can do is we can, we can pray. We can worship and we can pray. And, and so I want to just mention that. With the time remaining, I want to just do a little quick study uh, on the book that we've been going through all week long, Erwin McManus's The Last Arrow. This is a book that, that we've been journeying through. And, and when this idea was brought up to the campus pastors about, hey, let's study this book this week, uh, almost every one of us had read it and been impacted by Pastor Erwin McManus and his ministry and this book in particular. And so uh, so we're going to go uh, through this book, uh, finish up tomorrow. And, uh, but I want to start by taking a little detour, and it's all going to make sense. It's all going to come together. At least that's my plan. So stay with me on this. I do a lot of funerals. Now, there are many times where I'm entering a building, a, a, a funeral home, a church, where I don't know anybody in the service, but as a pastor, I've been called upon to officiate their, their, their service. And so as the families come in, here's what I notice. They bring in uh, many different pieces of memorabilia, things that remind them of their loved one. And each piece has its own story. And collectively, they each come together to write this beautiful story of a life well lived. Now, this is the core message from McManus's book, The Last Arrow, uh, as, that we've been studying. Basically, he is challenging us to live life to the full, uh, to, have, to live life with no regrets. Irwin says this, basically the theme of the book is this, leave nothing for the next life. Live your life in such a way that you leave nothing for the next life. In sports, we hear terms like, play through the whistle, uh, leave it all on the field, have no regrets. So how do we live that kind of life? How do we live a life where we leave nothing for the next life? Chapter seven of McManus's book, he says this, if you are going to live the life that God has created you to live, if you're going to live a life to your full potential, if you're going to live the kind of life that never settles, and I love that terminology. Uh, you have to come to the place where you decide to stop running and you choose to take a stand. You have to decide to stop running, he says, and, and, and choose to take a stand. So I want you to contemplate this question for the next minute or two. I, I want you to think about this. What is it you're running from? As we're in this pandemic season and life is kind of helter-skelter at times and crazy and, and unfamiliar, what are you running from? What's keeping you from living your life to the full? In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says these powerful words. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. 
So to live the kind of life where we stop running and, and have this courageous life that he's calling us to live, whatever that means in your world today, it's going to be different for each and every one of us. We have to learn to, to lean into our Heavenly Father. We have to learn to claim the trans, translatable principles of God's Word. I want to give you one of those from the Old Testament. The Old Testament that, that really has a lot to say to us as New Testament believers. Joshua 1.9 is a very familiar passage to many people. Let me just read that to you. Let me ask you to claim this promise. It says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The challenge there is to understand that God is with us. He's journeying with us through this whole time, this whole season of life. Matter of fact, when we hesitate and we stop and we don't take courageous steps, he moves out before us. He is going ahead of us to make a way for us. And he'll be waiting for us when we get there. So to live a courageous life, we, we, we've got to stop settling. We've got to stop running. And we have to step out in faith and lean into our faith and trust that God's going to be with us every step of the way. The other thing McManus says in, in, in The Last Arrow concerning this is, is to stop running and take a stand. Know that God's with you. And then he says this, find your people. Find the people that are with you. Find the people that are like-minded and like-hearted and will help you stand for the calling God's placed on your life that will help you step out in faith and step out courageously and will hold you up when you fall and will encourage you when you're scared and will motivate you and inspire you. Find those people. He says this, your greatest strength is not when you can prove that you don't need anyone. Your greatest strength is when you no longer have to prove that you can do it alone. And then he goes on to say, there is a strength in numbers. There is a strength that comes when you walk together with those who are of one heart and one mind, as you are. So here's my simple encouragement to you today from the last arrow. Stop running. Turn things over to the Lord that you can't control and stop running. Stop and turn and take a stand. Trust that God is with you every step of the way. Live courageously and take your people with you. And then when it's all said and done and others celebrate your life, it will truly be a life well lived and you will have left nothing for the next life. Well, as we close our time this morning, I, I want to thank you for being connected with us each and every day on the Compass Daily for, it, for being a part of our weekend worship experiences online. We just want to thank you for, for just supporting us. Listen, we're with you. We're praying for you, but we know you're praying for us. We get lots of encouragement from all of you, and we say thank you. It blesses our hearts. It really ministers to us and encourages us to continue this journey we're on as pastors here at Compass. So we thank you for your continued faithfulness in every way. And even though we're not meeting in physical locations yet, we know the time is coming, but not yet. Uh, we want you to know that your generosity matters, that your generosity is impacting not only our local community, uh, but the world around us. Because of your generosity and your faithfulness, uh, we're able to supply masks uh, and other supplies for essential workers around the DFW area. We have a group of amazing volunteers that are making masks on an ongoing basis to support the work of essential workers. And you, my friends, because of your generosity, are a part of the kingdom work that God is doing and making happen in our community and again, around the globe, literally around the globe. You can continue to give and be generous uh, by pushing the give button uh, that's in the video player you're watching right now in the platform uh, that you're on right now. You can do that. Or you can go, you can go to compass.church forward slash give. Or you can simply text the words Compass Church to 77977. God's going to continue to bless your obedience, to be faithful to him, 
and to your local church. And God's going to bless you uh, for being faithful to be generous. That's just how he operates. That's his economy. And so I want to thank you again for being with us this morning. I want to encourage you to continue uh, to worship with us this weekend. We continue our series, Anxious for Nothing, tonight, 6.30 p.m. This weekend, uh, we have services as well. And I want to encourage you to be online. Bring your families online. Start watch parties. Invite others to join you to find hope and to find help in these troubled times. It's going to be a great weekend here at Compass, and we look forward to seeing you online. And we always look forward to seeing you on the Compass Daily, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Central Time. We're all in this together. We serve a great God who has great plans for us, and we're so thankful that you continue to join us on the Compass Daily. And now we want to close today's time together with a special song from my friend, Johnny Diaz. I want to play a song that I wrote um, called Breathe, and I realize it might be weird to play a song called Breathe um, at this time, because it's like, breathe, but not on me, right? <laughs> but I hope this song can provide you a little bit of peace in uh, a crazy time. Alarm clock screaming, bear feet hit the floor. It's off to the races, everybody at the door. I'm feeling like I'm falling behind. It's a crazy life. And 90 miles an hour, going fast as I can. Trying to push a little harder, trying to get the upper hand. So much to do in so little time. It's a crazy life. It's ready, set, go. It's another wild day. When the stress is on the rise in my heart, I hear you say, just breathe. Just breathe, come and rest at my feet, and be, just be, chaos calls, but all you really need is to just breathe. trust in God. God bless. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for Compass Daily. As a reminder, we want you to be a part of our worship experience tonight. It begins at 6.30 p.m., and you can go to compass.church to check out all the times and the locations online. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for joining us at Compass Online.